Oh, very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Logan's European Outlook. We're going to have a bit of a long-range look today. I've been hinting for some time now about talking about the prospects of uh, developing El Nino and uh, what implications that may have on the upcoming summer season. So uh, this will be really the first look at summer 2023 and it's really just kind of ideas that I've got. Um, there's nothing kind of... Uh, particularly concrete or hard, you know, evidence backing uh, the ideas that I do have. But uh, I'm, I'm going to put it out there that, uh, you know, the El Nino, I think, is going to come on. You can actually start to see with the global sea. This is actually the first time, believe it or not, I've looked at the global sea surface temperatures in a long time. And that's obviously quite poor, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, I've just been so um, kind of, you know, bogged down with the strat warming, the end game to the winter, of course. And, uh, you know, looking back at the, the winter verification of the forecast and whatnot, I've kind of just been focused quite a lot recently on that, as well as, of course, uh, you know, working, uh, doing lorry driving during the overnight period as well. So I, I suppose uh, just you know, it's trying to find the time to sit and, and actually look at some stuff. Um, so, yeah, um, I've managed to cover a minute and a half of a waffle. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's focus. So you can see that the warming starting to take place over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean. And we're seeing cooling starting to develop over the central portion of the equatorial Pacific. So... The f strong phase 8 of the Man Julian Oscillation is now starting to kind of weaken. It was record-breaking strong phase 8. And uh, that is now um, starting to weaken in the phase 1. But what that Man Julian Oscillation has done with the strong convection versus strong subsidence, what we've seen is a strong westerly wind burst developing over the equatorial Pacific. And that is helping... Uh, draw this cool pool over the central portion of the Pacific and we're starting to see warming up against the South American coast and that will start to spread its way towards the central Pacific over the next month or so. And what that is going to do is it's going to start to change and recast the upper atmosphere across the entire planet and we will have a different signal. And this is a big deal, by the way, because really it's it's... It's three years since we've we've uh, you know had any uh, you know El Nino. In fact, the, the the La Nina has been lingering for three years. So you have to go back to just after the Super El Nino of uh, what 2015, 2016. I get those years mixed up um, with regards to exact. I, I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older, I'm starting to find that the years are blending together, and I'm finding it harder and harder to kind of differentiate some things between what years which maybe it's because i'm getting old i don't know but um anyway um it's been a long time since we've had uh, an el nino and there is long range modeling indicating that we do have a strong blocking area of high pressure centered almost bang slap over the uk for the upcoming summer season so this was a tweet put out by shrine Bruin, uh just a matter of uh, days ago i think and this is the, the Met Office long-range projection for mean sea level pressure for the Ju June through August period. So this is meteorological summer. And you can see here that we've got these this, this orange sitting uh, over the UK or over the North Sea stroke southern portion of Norway. Whatever way you want to cut it, that would indicate hot and dry overall, you know, for the, the upcoming summer season. And back in 2012, we came off a very, very dry run. Uh, we had a three-year La Nina, of course. And uh, I had forecasted a barbecue summer uh, for 2012. And it turned out to be the second, I believe it was the second wettest summer on record for the UK. Now, super wet, cool summers have been very, very rare in recent times around the British Isles and you know whether you want to contribute that to global warming man-made global warming cyclical whatever um there I have got a conflicting idea with regards to this upcoming summer now I've said 
throughout the course of winter, even I say that I think back at the end of last summer, uh, in fact it did, uh, that, that we could be looking at a wet, we're overdue a, a wet summer. Uh, whether it's cooler than average remains to be seen, but I think I'm going to go for wet uh, this year uh, based on my mistake that I made with the, you know, the multi-year La Nina, then we'd seen the development of an El Nino and it was almost like flicking a switch. And we went from really dry, really dry to very wet. And my hunch is that we could go back towards that. Now, if we look at the North Atlantic, because this is important, uh, you know, the Pacific's important. Indian Ocean, of course, is important. You notice here that it's largely warmer than average. Very, very warm conditions uh, in the North Pacific. We we'll have to take that into consideration, that ring of cool. Uh, you know, extending from uh, you know the Gulf of Alaska down the west coast of North America and all the way out towards the Fiji Islands, um, and of course we've got the warming over the eastern portion of the Pacific. We've got a lot of warmth over the uh, over the equatorial Atlantic as well. Now you would look at that warming and go, oh, it's going to be a big hurricane season, but not necessarily. When you get an El Nino, you tend to have more wind shear through the tropical Atlantic, but. Uh, it's interesting how the waters surrounding the British Isles, despite the fact that it has been quite cold in, in recent times, this would represent a lot of fuel. If we get the right type of pattern, we start to get areas of low pressure um, close to the UK, tapping this warmer than normal sea surface temperature, we could be looking at a, a wet period um, coming up. Now, not necessarily in during April, but it you know, I think we will see a turnaround. That that's the hunch, that's the feeling that I've got at the moment. And I would be a wee bit reluctant, if I'm being honest. Uh, and again, this is just ideas. This is a quick and dirty look uh, in the, my my mindset as to what what I think may be the case. This isn't my forecast, and uh, I'm going to be spending the next couple of months kind of trying to work out exactly what it, what what is going on, what I think and how the atmosphere may respond to this developing El Nino. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily right now be buying in solely to that and buying into the fact that it's going to be another hot, dry summer. Um, and I'm sure many people will be hoping that it isn't a hot, dry summer. So, uh, But this is this is the ECM, uh, no, sorry, this is the CFSV2 monthlies, and we'll quickly rattle through it, and then I'll show you the three-month, the, uh, the three period june through august to see what it's shown here but interesting for the month of uh, april by the way a uh, big strong blocking area of high pressure over scandinavia could we get some sort of an easterly developing at some point during the month of april and remember what i showed you in recent days the cooling that takes place over uh, the european continent i think this is still the lag effect of the sun's transferred warming this is a uh, for the month of May, and uh, that would represent we've got um, a bit of a negative NAO pattern actually, uh, positive up to the north. We've got possibly a troughiness over the southwest that could develop quite a showery, possibly a thundery um, month of May if that was to materialize. Of course, this is June. That could be a hot one. Uh, it could uh, be um, across the northern half of uh, Europe. July. So there's the negative just to the west of Ireland and the UK. That could deliver a cooler and wetter July. And that would be somewhat representative of what was seen in 2012. Uh, this is August and uh, then, of course, September, October, uh, November. So anyway, that's obviously way, way, way out there. Let's have a look at the... Um, the temperature profile here now with the warmer than normal atlantic my hunch would be that uh, it could end up being a still warmer than average summer because of the era in which we live and you know the overall trend multi-year trend that we've seen but i do think we're going we're going to increase precipitation hopefully and um, that would of course be a good thing because we've had such a, an extremely dry period during the uh, during February in particular. This is June, so very warm indeed looking. July, warm. August, warm. 
So you get the overall idea. The CFSV2 is certainly hinting at some very, very warm conditions. Let's have a look at the precipitation. And we'll go to April. You can see here that it's largely drier than average, which of course would exasperate the problem that we've already got and already discussed. This is May. Remember the area of low pressure, I said, further to the south, high pressure to the north. So it's reflective in the precipitation anomaly. This is for June. So slightly average to above average. Look at July. But this, this changes that you could go a week or two down the line and it's just completely the opposite. So you can't really go by the, these long range models either. They chop and change all the time. But that certainly is very interesting. And that kind of would back up the idea that I've got. This is the month of August. Again, so you combine the, the three month period and uh, it's actually looking uh, relatively wet. So this is June, July and August. And you can see that it is showing average to above average precipitation across the British Isles. Looking at the pressure chart for the three month period, you can see what it shows. So we've got a bit of a negative here, it's sitting just to the west of the UK. It's strong positive up across uh, Scandinavia, as you can see. So that's quite interesting. So, yeah, um, it's early days. Um, I will be working on this over the next uh, couple of months anyway, probably producing a forecast sometime around the beginning of June, and we'll wait and see what happens. We're overdue weather conditions, we're also overdue cooler conditions, but with warm sea surface temperatures, uh, sometimes even with a weather pattern, it can be hard to get below average. Uh, I don't think we're going to get warm than average June, July and August. We might get a warm June, cooler July, back to warm in August for the whole 90 day period you end up being warm than average that's you know classic example of that was the winter we had a cold december we're a slightly average uh, warmer than average uh, january i think it was about average in fact because we had the cold in the middle portion of the month with warm start warm end then a warmer february but we averaged out pretty much bang on average so um when it's very very difficult to pinpoint exactly an entire winter season or entire summer season. So we'll wait and see what happens. The winter forecast, in my opinion, was largely successful, give or take a few um, errors here and there, but I think the overall idea was very good. We'll wait and see what happens with the upcoming summer season. So that's the next big test coming up will be the summer of 2023. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, Please hit that subscribe button and uh, drop a comment in the link below or the discussion uh, section below and uh, let me know what you think the upcoming summer will be. So hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.